Hello, hello, I am Ashley Nicole, and you are listening to An Introvert at Large, a podcast about taking control of your mind and your life along the way. Life is an experiment, you're the scientist. Let's get into it. So just a heads up, this is my first time recording this with a camera, so we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna do my best. As I always like to say, again, life is an experiment. I am the scientist, so I'm just gonna have to figure it out and give it a go. But anyways, so tonight I wanna talk about the idea of how starting a project in and of itself will teach you things that make the project valuable, regardless of whether it becomes a success in the way people define success. So first of all, if you're thinking about starting a project, making a website, I really hope that this podcast and the blog post that goes along with it will convince you to just dive right in because it's not all about follower count or read count or anything like that. The things you learn by just starting a project are just are unbelievable. This is my unusual case for starting that project. I mean, or maybe I'm just, it's not that unusual and I just think it is. I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go through a list through, through three projects that have taught me things I just would not know if I hadn't just dove, like dove in, dove in, dived in. If I hadn't just jumped in feet first, I never would have learned these things. So first of all was music. I've been composing since I was 11 years old, songwriting since I was 18, but I, I really started getting into songwriting when I was, I think like 22, maybe 23 years old. I can't really remember when I decided it was my hobby, like the thing I love to do whenever I had extra time. But it was really scary to put my stuff out there and it was scary to admit to people that this was something I really liked because it kind of raises the stakes. Like I'm sure you're familiar with that, um, how as soon as you say, yeah, I do this, it somehow raises the stakes. Things got even scarier when I decided to actually record my music and start posting it. But since I decided that I was going to post music and like really share it, I've learned the following things. How to finish a song, how to write a bridge, which was still a big struggle for me, um, how to communicate with a producer, how to develop new music relationships and let go of others. This is uh, something I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't just jumped in. You can read all the articles you want, but until you jump in and you're meeting people and you're engaging with people, you just don't realize who you gel with and who you don't. I also learned how to co-write, which was a skill I had never developed. Um, I learned how to distribute a song, whether that's TuneCore, though I hear DistroKid is a better choice. Um, I learned to share my music at critiques. I learned how to function in a recording studio, how to sign up for performing rights organizations, splitting royalties, divvying up rights, executing and planning and executing release parties, getting opening acts to come out, um, securing paying photographers. I mean, the list goes on. I'm not famous. And I haven't written a song for anyone famous. Lauren Daigle, call me. <laughs> but I never would have learned those valuable skills without making the ongoing project of music a priority in my life, regardless of how it turned out in the grand scheme of things. So right now I am seeing some pretty exciting, um, some pretty exciting developments, but that's besides the point because I learned those things way before the good news of today. So my blog, I have 54 followers and I love each and every one of you or them. I don't know how many of you cross over to the podcast, but I love you, whoever does and whoever doesn't. Um, but I've had this blog since 2016, okay? And I've been putting out, so that means I've been putting out content for four years and I have 54 followers. By any like measurement of success, that's that's a failure. But the things that I've learned from having a blog are not failings. I've learned how to build a website, how to navigate WordPress, how to write consistently. I've learned how to create engaging graphic design for free. I've allowed my personal brand of humor to permeate my writing. I found my writing voice. I know how to engage in comments, develop relationships with like-minded bloggers. I have learned how to speak the truth and be honest about where I am on any given topic that doesn't sound like failure to me. So again, regardless of whether I end the year with the same 54 or 54,000 followers, my blog is worth something because first of all, I enjoy it. And secondly, it's taught me some important lessons that I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't just jumped in and gone for it. So 
that's the second project that's taught me things I would not know today if I hadn't just jumped in. The third one is this podcast. It's really new. I was looking at my um I was looking at my stats on Anchor. I'm sorry, this just makes me laugh. I have tw- an estimated audience size of 12. <laughs> but honestly, I don't care because Again, I have learned things from starting this podcast that I wouldn't have learned any other way. For example, how to say what I write as clearly as possible, even though I'm still working on that. I've realized that I say, um, I say like, I say a lot of filler words that this will teach me to eliminate from my vocabulary. I've learned how to develop, how to develop an intro that says what I'm about in a few seconds. I've even learned how to write a musical intro that's both memorable and pleasant. Um, I've learned how to edit a podcast, which means cutting out a lot of empty space, which you wouldn't expect when you start the project, but it's like, oh, I, I said like again. It does reveal to you how many pauses you use when you speak. I've learned how to navigate the anchor.fm site. I personally find it really simple and really easy to use. I don't edit on there, but I really like it. I've also met some interesting podcasters and been invited on other podcasts because I started this podcast. I mean, and it's tiny and already I'm seeing how my friend group could be changing and morphing and I'm meeting interesting people who are are pursuing fascinating things. So um, I also learned how to choose a microphone. I like this microphone a lot. I learned how to sit down and just record. It's harder than you'd think to just say, I'm going to record it this time, this many days a week, and to just do it. It's actually really difficult, but it's strengthened me in ways that I wasn't anticipating. I've learned what I really enjoy talking about versus what I would rather write about. So as time goes on, that's starting to become a clear split. And sometimes that will coincide, but it might not as much as it is now. I also learned what topics translate well to podcast and which don't, and which things are too complicated to just say, in which case writing would be both the safer and the truer option. I've learned how to augment my blog posts by including an audio version, which it just never occurred to me until I started this. I was like, why haven't I done this? It makes perfect sense. I just had a conversation with a friend the other day. I I posted on my Instagram, on my story, um, that what I learned, uh, just three lessons, I can't even remember them now, but three lessons that I learned from starting a podcast and was just encouraging people, you know, just start the project and see what happens. At the very least, you'll learn things you wouldn't have learned before. And uh, she said, that it was really encouraging to her. And we and we talked about how it might be better to start looking at projects from the perspective of learning and self-education. Uh, and I'm so on board with that. Starting, starting a project really is the only way to learn things you don't even know you need to learn. And it might be frustrating or hilarious. Like my foray into TikTok and commercial acting and social media in general has been both frustrating and hilarious at times, but I learned things so fast and the lessons stick. And This isn't in the blog, but as an aside, a job is nothing more than learning in the moment. Really, like even though you can go to school for something, real world experience trumps, supersedes any lesson you could possibly have in a classroom. And so getting used to being in that space of, I don't have anything but my hard work and my quit my critical thinking skills to help me right now that will help you in every job so here's the rundown on why you should start that project right now this is my opinion starting a new project teaches you how to figure things out i just said that but can't hurt to say it again it teaches you how to figure things out in the moment and fast and less and stick starting a new project shows you how much you always have to learn Who knew that you had to have a performing rights organization to even publish a song properly? I certainly didn't know that until I dove in and asked people for help. Starting a new project, it's the fastest way to figure out whether something's your speed. You can, as I've said, read all the articles you want, ask all the people you want about whether I should start a podcast, what do you think, blah, blah, blah. But until you try it, you just don't know. The fastest way to find where you should be and what you should be doing is to just try. I think that's number three. Uh, Starting a new project teaches you things you wouldn't have known otherwise. Already mentioned that, but 
bears repeating. There are so many things that I just didn't know about songwriting and the songwriting business, about about blogging, and I mean, I haven't obviously made a business out of blogging, but of the blogging business that I had no idea before I even started. It seemed like, oh, you just post and blah, blah, there it is. Starting a new project prepares you for your big break. So the fact that I know how to build a website, the fact that I know how to blog consistently, the fact that I know all of these, all of this background information about enter the entertainment industry and the music industry makes me that much more hireable and and more scalable into bigger and bigger opportunities because I have this background of knowledge that I didn't have before. So starting a project prepares you for your big break. And honestly, the last one is starting a project might just be a great time. Again, like I said, I have met such interesting people through my blog. I've started getting into some really interesting conversations about the events that are happening these days and our take on those events. I found some really interesting uh, mindset people who, who talk about politics or in the position of high vibe and low vibe ideas and politics. I've, I've been invited onto podcasts. I'm actually going to be recording one tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. Um, really exciting stuff. And none of that would have happened if I hadn't just started. So that's that's what I want to say to you. Get on it. Give it a try. At the very worst, you will have learned skills you wouldn't have known before. And you just might make it big. There's really no lose. I mean, obviously there's always going to be people who are like, well, you just have five followers or whatever. Who cares what they say? Honestly, I've mentioned this before. People who who criticize your work aren't punching down. People who are who are past you and who are doing better than you, they're not the ones who are critiquing your work. Maybe they're not even doing it on purpose. Why they do it doesn't matter. But the point is, whatever project it was that you weren't sure about, I hope that this convinces you to go for it. So that's all I have for you now. Um, as ever, remember that you have a powerful mind, an iron will, and the heart of a lion. Life is an experiment. You're the scientist. I'm Ashley Nicole, and you've been listening to An Introverted Large.